In today's video, I will be teaching you about probability, the types of probability that we have, definition of experiments, sample space, and even. In simple terms, I would be teaching you the basics of probability. So without further ado, let's get into the video properly. People use the word probability a lot and it is kind of synonymous to when something is actually uncertain, that is, it is not really sure or there's a chance that something is not going to happen. Or not so the first question you're asking yourself is what is probability in simple terms probability is actually the measure of the likelihood or the chance that a specific event is actually going to happen there's a probability that my team is going to win the match it simply means that I'm not sure that my team is going to win the match but there is a chance that my team is actually going to win the match there's a probability that is going to come to school today so that means in as much as we feel like he's going to come to school today there is a chance that he might not come to school today but there's also a chance that he might come to school today so these are the basic examples that we can use to explain the basis of the term probability so let's talk about the types of probability some call it approach but i prefer to call it the types uh, so basically we actually have two types of probability we have what we call the frequencies probability and we have the bayesian probability so as the name implies the frequencies probability it comes from the word frequency frequency in simple terms is basically the number of times that something is actually repeating itself in the mathematical context frequency is actually the number of times that a specific variable is repeating itself so a frequencies probability actually get the probability of an event by performing the event several number of times for example let's ask a frequencist what is the probability that if i roll a fair die just once i'm going to be having a six a frequency is going to perform this experiment that is it's going to roll this die like close to like a thousand times or two thousand times then calculate the sample space of this thousand times of experiments and the number of times that six actually showed up when he rolled the die 1000 or 2000 times and this way he's going to be able to get the probability that a 6 is actually going to show up. Do you get the logic? A frequencist has to perform an experiment several number of times before he or she can be able to get the probabilistic value attached to any event. Now one of the downside of the frequencist approach is based on the fact that in real life situation some experiments, some events cannot be performed several number of times. For example, you are a doctor and uh, your patient is having cancer and you want to treat the cancer. You can't keep treating the cancer several number of times for you to be able to get the chance that he or she is going to survive that cancer. And this is where the Bayesian probability comes inside. So first thing first, the Bayesian probability is as a result of what we call the Bayes theorem. And what this approach simply do is based on the fact that it helps us to calculate the probability that an event is going to happen right now based on past events based on the fact that something like this has actually occurred previously now you are using the details from the past events to actually get probability that this current event is going to happen or not so in fact the Bayes theorem is actually the best approach to probability take for example a civil engineer is trying to build a bridge and is looking for the chance that the bridge is actually going to collapse or not he has to go back to previous models of the bridge that is trying to build try to get the probability that that same model in the past has actually collapsed or not then use these details to get the chance that the bridge is building right now is going to collapse or not so for us to understand the basis of probability and understand the probability properly we have to understand some key terms and that is going to be the uh, the terms of experiments sample space and events so let's start with the definition of experiments in the world of probability an experiment is any occurrence whose outcome is actually uncertain that is as far as you have an occurrence or something that is happening and you cannot predict accurately what is going to happen that is there's a chance that that thing might occur or it might not occur then we actually have an experiment take for example if i decide to roll a fair die just once we can't tell if it's going to be a one that to show up or a two that is going to show up or a three but you definitely know that something is going to show up between one down to six this case rolling a die is actually an experiment let's take another experiment i am a chelsea fan i'm a football fan and uh, if my team is supposed to play the match i can't tell you if my team will win or if my team is going to lose the match or the match is going to end in a draw but i'm very sure that it's going to be either win loss and draw i can't tell you so that makes the football match an experiment now the next is for us to define what a sample space is and in simple terms a sample space is actually the list of all the possible outcome of an experiment 
so let's go back to the example of the rolling a fair die just once so rolling a fair die just once is the experiment right here and the list of all the possible outcomes that can show up as a result of rolling a fair die just once is actually going to be one two three four five six so that simply implies that the sample space of the experiment of rolling a fair die is actually equals to one two three four five six please note that whenever you are trying to list out the sample space of an experiment it is a set so you have to enclose all of the members in a curly bracket pay attention to that for the football match the possible outcome of a football match is actually win loss or draw so the sample space of the experiment of a football match is going to be equals to win loss or draw an event is simply the subset of the sample space of an experiment so that simply implies that all of the values present in the sample space of an experiment actually makes up an event so let us take the experiment of a football match the sample space is actually win loss or draw in this case win is a subset of the sample space so that means win is an event loss is a subset of the sample space loss is also an event the same thing we draw if i decide to take just one event or a single event out of the sample space of the experiment of a football match then i have what we we'll call a simple event so win in curly brackets is a simple event loss in curly brackets is a simple event draw in curly brackets is also a simple event so when i decide to take two of the members in the sample space then we have what we we'll call a compound event let's take for example win comma loss now makes up a what a compound event because we have two outcomes right here we can also say win and draw is also a compound event loss and draw is also a compound event as far as there is a chance that an event is going to occur there is also a chance that that same event is actually not going to occur let's say we have an event a and p into bracket a is denoted as a chance that event a is actually going to occur now let's say for example there's a 60 percent chance that i'm going to show up in school today if there is a 60 percent chance that i'm going to be showing up in school today then definitely there is a 40 percent chance that i won't be showing up in school today if p of a represent probability that an event is going to be happening then p complement a represent the chance that that same event is not going to happen when we decide to add the chance of an event happening and the chance of the same event not happening the answer must be equal to 100 percent or one that is p of a plus p complement of a is equals to 100 percent or is equals to one this is what we call the complement rule the probabilistic value of events can actually take a range of values in fact this value ranges between zero and one with zero and one included we can actually write this thing in terms of inequality where we say the probabilistic value of an event is going to be equals to zero lesser than or equals to p lesser than or equals to one so that means zero and one are actually inclusive if the probabilistic value of an event is equals to zero it means that it is sure that the event is not going to happen and if the probabilistic value of an event is actually equals to one or hundred percent it means that we are very certain we are very sure that that event is going to happen and if the probabilistic value of an event is equals to 50 percent it simply implies that there's a 50 percent chance or a half chance that the event is going to happen and a one over two chance or a 50 percent chance that the same event is actually not going to happen in our next video i'll be talking about the concept of probability but in a more mathematical way meaning i'll be giving a formula for calculating the probability of an event and also the mathematics that defines some events we have in probability do you have a question for me or you think i actually missed something please go down to the comment section and actually drop your comment and question i'll be willing to actually answer them do you want to learn statistics for data analysis i actually have a playlist right here that can actually help you just go check it out thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one bye for now